Welcome everybody. Our signing day coverage is brought to you by Old Dominion Freight Lines here with Coach Babers and Coach, it is a Christmas come early for uh, football coaches with this uh, early signing day period uh, here falling uh, just before a little holiday break. So you get a breather, but congratulations, you got another haul in here. Oh, thank you so much. We, the guys, first of all, I want to thank the staff. They've done a great job. We've been all over the place in bringing this thing together and we're really excited. So to this point, as of the time we visit right now, 15 players in, a little bit of a mix in terms of uh, transfers, high school players, uh, that type of thing, and we'll ad address that as we go by. What's the top of mind conclusion here? Uh, and the, I guess the real point is it's not a conclusion, isn't it? That this is just the beginning of uh, not a signing day, but a signing period, and it's the early one of two. It's really, it's really a, a part one of, of three because it'll open and close again with the transfer report of July 4 through 7, and then you get the last one uh, first Wednesday in Feb February. So this is the bigger part, there's no doubt about it, but then when you got part two, part three, uh, the big conclusion is we wanted to get uh, bigger. And if you watch how many offensive linemen and defensive linemen we have, we think we've achieved that. You've gotten away from tempo a little bit in your last couple of years, right? Does that, is that a ripple effect that makes sense now? Maybe you had smaller guys before to keep up with the stamina and snapping it every 12 seconds, and now it's a little different? I, I just think when, how many plays you want to do a season, how many snaps you want to get in. And uh, when you've got the depth, you can do that. With the COVID split that happened in the middle, and then the transfer portal, name, image, and likeness, all that stuff that's going on now, you gotta really try to balance how many times you have your guys out there. It is NLI day, National Letter of Intent, uh, but very much over that is NIL, name, image, and likeness. What sense did you get of how that all worked for or against you in the recruiting world? There's, there's, a, there's a new sheriff in town, and its name is Transfer Portal and Name, Image, and Likeness. And uh, you can catch the train, or you can be standing at the station. And uh, I think it's been pretty evident that this is going to be the new normal now, and uh, we need to get on board. Yeah, do you feel well organized for it? I mean, obviously, there's, there's time ahead for that to, to continue to develop. I think as this stuff starts to work its, work its way out, I think people will get more and more organized with it. When people are interested in, in Syracuse and signing, what's the reason? I think the biggest thing is still academically, they like what's going on. Uh, it's not a four-year decision, it's a 40-year decision. They like the people in the building, they want to be around them, and they like the atmosphere. Any sense that in the current world it's becoming less of a 40, it's, uh, the, the, the window of how far people are looking out is not 40 years? That might be the case, but we need to focus on the ones that see the 40 because yeah. that's, that's the Willy Wonka golden ticket. And uh, every football player will come a day where they, they will either cut, get cut, have to retire, or from injuries will not be able to play this game anymore. And it happens at different ages, and Brady is different <laughs> than everybody else. And so unless you're Brady or you're a kicker, it's probably gonna happen a heck of a lot faster, and what are you gonna do the other 40 years or 36 years of your life? And I totally agree with you, but I get the sense that that is what really the selling point of Syracuse is, is that if you, if, and you want the type of people who are thinking of it being a 40 year, because that makes for a better locker room and everything else. Absolutely. We see, uh, you know, I was, I'm always intrigued when we get this sheet every year, here are the recruits, and I love the geographical breakdown because it, it's interesting to see where do you have success, where are you looking for what type of athletes, um, how well did you recruit at home, how was the crop in any given year in New York, uh, what is your sense of that where uh, the New York, New Jersey connection is strong, but you're not afraid to cherry pick as needed elsewhere? I thought it was the best crop I, since I've been here in the state of New York. We got four out of the state of New York. I think all four of these guys could be starters for us. This was a, a big, big year in the state and we really did hold our own, which was exciting. We, uh, we got four guys from uh, neighboring states, okay, it's something that's connected or touching the state of New York. So the way we look at it, we've got eight out of our geographic uh, footprint that we're really trying to draw a lot of people from. And their parents we, are driving to the games. Well, there's no doubt about it, and they'll be in the stands. And now, and then everyone else, we had to uh, fill in some holes uh, all around the country. Yeah, and it's upstate New York too, which um, is another sort of distinction. Not known uh, historically for being talent rich, but I know you want to get what there is there. So when you have a, a signee from Albany and one from Buffalo, and and the occasionally the Jones boys are from the Binghamton area, you know th that that is an impactful thing for you. I'll take the Jones boys again, please. I'll take two of them. <laughs> You've had the two, and uh, hopefully they're, they're more than two in a lifetime, but uh, shout out to, to Chandler and Art, and, and uh, maybe there's another version at uh, UE or anywhere else though, where you, you might be able to, to swing those guys. All right, I lied. One more last question. With that group, can you be more surgical 
because there's a little more track record and say, look, we need a, oh, just not to put words in your mouth, you tell me, we need a wide receiver. We need a blank and uh, you can go shopping. You can go shopping and the, uh, the talent level or the pool may be more talented than the one we just picked out of. Yeah, interesting stuff. All right, coach, uh, good job done by you and your staff. Best of luck on what's next, okay? Thanks, Matt. That's Orange head coach Dino Babers and our recap of Syracuse's first NLI day of uh, this period brought to us by Old Dominion Freight Lines.